Hello everyone. Myself Sabri and I welcome you to our channel Solution Bridge Network and one stop solution for all your power platform tutorials. Today's discussion topic is delegation. Delegation is a fundamental concept in Power App that allows the platform to efficiently process and manipulate large data sets from various data sources. One should not kickstart a Power App's development if they are unaware of what a delegation is and what it causes when they are working with a large set of data. So let's understand what a delegation is. When working with large data sets, Power Apps may not be able to handle all operations efficiently due to the limitations in memory and the processing power. Delegation allows Power Apps to leverage the capabilities of the underlying data source to filter, sort, and manipulate data before bringing it to the app. Considering SharePoint list as a source, and let's say we have thousands of records and you want to display only the items created by a specific user. Instead of retrieving all the records and then filtering them in the Power App, you can delegate the filtering operation to SharePoint itself. This means that only the filtered subset of data is fetched to the Power App, resulting in the faster performance and reduced strain on the Power Apps. Now you might have a question, so delegation is helpful. It will increase the performance and reduce the strain to Power Apps. So it is very important to understand which operations can be delegated and which cannot. Delegation is supported for many common operations such as filtering, sorting and searching but there are limitations and considerations to keep in mind such as the delegation thresholds and data source capabilities. So this varies with different set of data sources. In today's video, we are considering SharePoint list as one of our data source and see what are the delegable and non-delegable queries and how to identify if we have a delegation warning in the application. So here I have opened a blank canvas app and I've connected one of my SharePoint list as a data source, which is employee data. So let me take you to the SharePoint site where I have the employee data hosted. So I have an ID column, title, email, and country. If you go to the site content, we will be able to understand the size of our list. So employee data contains 2,500 line items. So let me get back to the Power Apps where I have added a simple gallery and just connected the employee data as the source. So here, my gallery will be just showing all the entries. So I've just called out the ID column, name and email ID. I would like to add a text box which counts the number of items in my gallery. So here, what I can say, gallery item count. So it's a text. So I would like to close the quotes and use an ampersand symbol and I use the function gallery one dot all items count. So now you can see gallery item count is 100. If you run the app and if you scroll and if you pass that 100 items, your gallery count will get refreshed and you will start seeing the next 200 set of data. So this is how the Power Apps uses the memory efficiently. If you go past scrolling, you will reach 2500, obviously. Now, let's understand what is a delegation and how it impacts this. So let me get back to the edit mode where I would like to copy this text label. Here, I would like to use a function called count rows, which counts the number of rows available in my source, changing the name as source count close the quotes add an ampersand symbol and use the function count rows of my data set employee data and close the bracket immediately after writing the formula you can see a small scribble line and even you can see an yellow exclamatory mark if you hover over the scribbled line or if you hover over the exclamatory mark, which says, this is a delegation warning. The highlighted part of the formula may not work correctly on large data sets. So delegation warning occurs when a specific query, what you're trying to use is non-delegable with this data source. So here, if you see 
count rows function is a non delegable query with respect to the data source what we are using which is a sharepoint list so here since it is a non delegable query sharepoint asks power apps how many rows i need to retrieve when working on this function so power app says you retrieve first 500 so if you want to see where the number 500 is defined you can go to the settings and if you scroll down you will find a section called data row limit where it says 500 now you can think since our data source is 2500 we can directly go ahead and change it as 2500 here there is a limit and the number should vary from 1 and 2000 so we will not be able to increase it more than 2000 so let's say we can give it as 2000 and we can close so once you save your app and reloads your app you will see the updated count so i have already saved my app and i'm reloading now you can see that the source count changes to 2000 so which is not actually the complete count but we have a limitation that we will not be able to get more than 2000 since the count rows function is a non delegable query so i'll take you to a documentation of microsoft which talks about the list of delegable operations for sharepoint so if you see there are list of functions such as filter sort sort by columns loops and there are certain operators as well and it's been compared with the type of columns what we have in sharepoint like number text boolean date type or complex so if you ask me what is a complex field in sharepoint you will be able to see the list of column types which are categorized as complex in sharepoint in your screen if you are using a filter function within a text column and you are using an equal to operator in the filter function then your query is delegable and you will not have a problem with it if you are using a filter operation in a text column where you are using which is not equal to then it is a non delegable query so here the power apps will just give the number that has been defined and sharepoint will just load the first 500 or 2000 records based on the delegation limit set in the power apps and the rows past the delegation number will not be accounted for your operation so for instance let's say let's try using a filter function in our sharepoint in a text column in our data source we have title email and country as text columns so let's try filter using a country so let's go to the power apps select the gallery and in the items property let's use a filter function and i would like to use a text column so here it is a country is my text and i would like to use an equal to operator so country is equal to France. let me close and close the bracket here you can see there is no delegation warning associated with it and you are getting the total item as 80 and you are not seeing an exclamatory mark in there so which means this query is delegable and you will be able to get the records even though the count is past 2000 if you want to clarify that let's go to the settings and let's set the delegation limit as 10 here and let's close it save the app and reload the app now you can observe since our delegation limit is 10 the source count is 10 because count row is a non-delegable query but here since our gallery count is 80 because filter with an equal to operator in a text column is delegable and hence we are able to retrieve the all 80 ids going back to the documentation to show you a delegation limit if you use a filter column inside a number with this sign says partially delegable and see the point number three so if you scroll to the point number three the sharepoint id being a number it supports only equal to operation as delegable so let's verify that so let's go to the power app here let's say change this filter condition 
where I say ID is greater than 20. You can see we have a small scribble line which notes the delegation and since our delegation limit is set to 10, it checks whether any of the ID in the first 10 rows is greater than 20. It does not and hence it's blank. If I say ID greater than 5, then obviously we'll be getting first 5 entries within 10 count where 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is displayed because our delegation limit is set to 10. As we see here, the SharePoint ID field is a non-delegable query with respect to all other operations than equal to. So let's try equal to and see how it works. If I remove this and say equal to, you can see there is no delegation warning associated with it. And you can also see that the number five is returned. Let's say even if you give 250, the 250th record will be returned since filter with a number column equal to is non-delegable. So I'll be giving this link of this Microsoft official documentation in the description. So you can just go and check all the information available. By drilling down the delegation notes, if you are having an expression that you are joining with and or or operation, then they are delegable, but we should avoid using not. So here you can see equal to operations being delegable with all the type of columns. We prefer to use equal to rather than using not. Coming down to the second point of the delegation notes, in the complex type, within the person data type column, only email and display name are delegable. So we have already covered the third point, which says that SharePoint field ID is delegable only with respect to an equal to operator. Coming down to the fourth point, is blank, if you see here, is blank, is non-delegable with all the columns. But if you use equal to blank, then it is delegable. So there are certain set of columns that get auto created in a SharePoint list, which we call it as SharePoint system fields. And these are all non-delegable columns. Before creating a SharePoint app, make sure and try to avoid as much as delegation warning so we will not end up losing the data or showing incorrect information in case of large data sets. By this, we come to an end of this video. And if you have any questions or clarifications, you can post it on the comment section and we will be try to answer as soon as possible. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe our channel, hit the like button and press the bell icon for our new video alerts.